Hello, I'm High Hill Knight. Welcome to my channel and welcome to a special triple review. I'm going to be talking about three Batman animated films that came out around the same time. Uh, first, we have Batman Gotham by Gaslight, which I give an A+. We have Batman vs. Two-Face, which I give a B+. And Scooby-Doo and Batman the Brave and the Bold, which I give an A-. These films came out relatively near each other, uh, so I decided to just do them all at one time. But to help keep things simple, I am going to uh, introduce the film, uh, give a quick, quick synopsis, and then say one thing I liked and one thing I didn't like. And then, of course, at the very end, give a basic assessment of how I enjoy or didn't enjoy all the films. But as you can tell by my grade, I clearly enjoyed these movies. So starting with Gotham by Gaslight, it's a uh, adaptation of an actual graphic novel special that was uh, published several years ago. It's R-rated. Uh, it deals with Batman in Gotham City during the time of the 1900s when uh, Jack the Ripper was about. So in this movie, uh, it takes Jack the Ripper, puts him in 1900s Gotham. It matches all the characters in that time frame and uh, it's very steampunk visual style. It's um, definitely a murder mystery and it's uh, very good. Uh, what I like most about it is that Batman fails many times. Uh, when he goes against Jack the Ripper, he gets beaten up uh, significantly. Very often in Batman uh, media, Batman rarely gets beaten up unless it's like a, a special case like with Bane, we know Bane was uh, someone that definitely beat up the Batman, so it's okay for Bane to beat up Batman. But usually, Batman almost always comes out on top of any fight. Where here, guys, my guy's like, he really gets put through the ringer. Uh, he also fails to save some people. Again, uh, it's very rare to see Batman fail at anything, so it's just interesting to see him fail to save uh, certain people in the story, and the S is... Uh, just figure out what to do next, pick himself up, and rely on others. One thing I didn't like about the film is that's something that I was sort of disliking about the DC animated features that are R-rated in general, is that the subject is a lot more R-rated than the actual material. Um, who knows, maybe a year or two or now from now, after uh, things like Logan and Deadpool and uh, possibly even the upcoming New Mutants horror films, the Warner Brothers Animation Studio will take more risk of actually making an R-rated feature. But yeah, it's just sort of off-putting that these R-rated features are really more like uh, PG, uh, I don't know, 16, <laughs> because they're actually dealing with death and blood, but you don't really see much death and blood in violence and gore. So that's one thing I didn't like about it. It's like, you know, if you're going to go R, you're going to talk about Jack the Ripper. I mean, if there's anything such about uh, one of the most notorious serial killers of all time, that's when you really should just go R. You know, don't turn it into a gore fest, but still, you know, just be R, show uh, actual, uh, you know, people being murdered, being eviscerated, uh, go with uh, some extra foul language, just go R or <laughs> just forget about it. Okay, next we have Batman versus Two-Face. And this is sort of a follow-up to another uh, animated film that was released, uh, Batman Return of the Cape Crusaders, in which uh, it's based on the 1960s uh, live-action show. It has Adam West, Burt Ward uh, returning to do Batman and Robin. We also have now William Shatner coming in as the voice of Two-Face. We have uh, Julie Newmar reprising her role as Catwoman. So it's great to hear all these uh, voices again. Uh, and the m story of this is Harvey Dent seems to be rehabilitated, but there's a uh, villain uh, doing things in Gotham. And is Harvey Dent reverting back to his Two Face persona, or is there another person uh, pretending to be Two Face setting up Harvey for the fall? So. What I loved most about this movie is that uh, it shows Harvey Dent and Batman working together in the courtroom. Uh, Harvey Dent many times says, you know, Batman captures the criminals, I put them away in jail. 
And in the movie, actually, you see a segment where Harvey is uh, host, is uh, handling a case in court against another supervillain, and Batman is called to testify. And it's this really interesting concept of that pairing, you know, uh, Batman sets it up, and Harvey didn't knocks it out. So I really would have liked that scene to explore it more, which leads to what I didn't like about the movie. Uh, this movie introduces a lot of interesting concepts that only gets stressed to the surface. So like I said, Batman and Harvey did working together to put criminal away. That's a great idea. Another great idea that's introduced to this is that uh, Robin becomes jealous of Batman's uh, relationship with Harvey Dent. Robin is jealous as not only as Robin, but also as Dick Grayson because Bruce Wayne and Harvey Dent are also close friends. So that's an interesting aspect. There's also an interesting aspect of Batman and Catwoman having a semi-relationship despite Catwoman being incarcerated. There's a lot of interesting ideas, and yet uh, it barely scratches the surface, and which is odd because this, this particular film is made for people of my age or order, folks that are familiar with the uh, show from the 60s. You can present it to kids, and kids will probably like it, but it's not like, say, the Lego Batman movie, which is totally for all ages, especially kids, where this is, you can show it to kids, and the kids will probably enjoy it, because it's Batman, and it's animated, and there's nothing uh, foul or evil, or just very simple about it. But still, it's, there's many jokes, many scenes, many moments, many sights that are designed for folks who have grown up with Batman in that show. So it's just weird that, that every time you think, ooh, this is something new, this is something different, this is something interesting, they don't really go for it. So I wish they would have gone for it with that. And finally, we have Scooby-Doo and Batman the Brave and the Bold. If you're not familiar with Batman Brave and the Bold, that was a cartoon in which... Uh, Batman would always pair up with some other superhero, and they would take on uh, supervillains. Uh, it's always a team-up. So in this, not only is Batman teaming up with other heroes, uh, Batman is teaming up with the Scooby-Doo gang. Now, if you're of my age or around uh, my age or older, you probably remember that uh, the old Scooby-Doo cartoon where Batman and Robin teamed up with the Scooby-Doo gang to defeat some supervillains. Well, this this uh, movie ignores that. This is basically the Scooby-Doo Day first time meeting Batman and several of the heroes. The heroes, uh, they're all detectives, and they have a special uh, detective group in Gotham, and they recruit Mystery Incorporated to join their company and help solve the one case that Batman has yet to solve. And it's very fun, it's very lighthearted, uh, many of these Scooby-Doo movies are self-aware, so they find ways to make jokes about um, meddling kids or how uh, they always split up for clues and things like that. So it's very fun, very silly, very kid-friendly, but if, you, again, you're like me, you'll appreciate a lot of the uh, references that go into it. What I like most about it is that uh, there's many times when Daphne gets to be the smart one. She just knows certain things that the others don't. And it's just fun to see her be the smart one, outsmarting Velma, outsmarting all the other superheroes. So it's really cool to get that. Uh, the only thing I didn't like is that because this is a team up, uh, there are lots of superheroes, there's lots of super villains. It's a visual feast. But when it comes to the conclusion, you're juggling dozens of characters, you're juggling dozens of scenes, and there's like three climaxes in the movie. Usually the climax is when you reveal the villain. And there's like two reveals, and then from those two reveals, there's another climax. It's like three climax. It becomes very complicated for something that's definitely for kids. The other two movies I mentioned, uh, Gotham My Gaslight, that's definitely for adults. And the uh, Batman vs. Two Ways, that's for adults, but you can definitely watch your, have your kids watch it. Where this one, it is for kids. And it's just weird that this is the one that's complicated and confusing and trying to keep track of who is doing what. And there's many times where the heroes are just there and the villains are just there. And it's fun to watch them fight and, and everything. But for the, when they're not on screen, it's like you're wondering, okay, where did this person go? Where did that person go? Is this person going to be? Is that person going to be? And when they come back, like, oh, yeah, that's right. You're here. You're here. You're here. Like, uh, it's, it's a bit of a mess. An enjoyable mess, but still, it's like 
maybe they could have shaved one or two, or maybe just had them all at the end, you know, like introduce them and say, okay, uh, we're going to go on this particular case. We'll catch up with y'all later. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's really strange, but still enjoyable. Of the three movies, I like them all. And even though I'm giving the highest grade to Batman Gotham by Gaslight, when it comes to the movie that I enjoyed overall out of the three, it definitely goes to Scooby-Doo and Batman <laughs> the Brave and the Bold. Now, despite what I just complained about so many characters, I'm sucker for team-ups. Superhero team-ups, I'm a sucker for. So the Avengers, the Defenders, the Justice League, Young Justice, Teen Titans, any type of you know, big team-up of superheroes and superheroes, I just love. So yeah, even though I'm, you know, as a critic, I'm complaining about the overabundance of characters that are pretty much useless, uh, uh, except for particular moments. Yeah, <laughs> the more the <laughs> rarity. So I, I, I love that. I, that's just me. So yeah, I'm giving the ultimate nod to the Scooby-Doo film, but all three are very good. All three are very enjoyable. I recommend all three. Uh, you'll have a good time no matter which one you choose to watch. So once again, Batman got them by Gaslight gets an A+. Plus. Batman versus Two-Face gets a B+. Plus. And Scooby-Doo... <laughs> Batman, <laughs> Brave and the Bold, gets an A minus. <laughs> Lots of Batman. That's why I keep getting uh, tongue tied. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, or dislike, share, and subscribe. I welcome all feedback, good and bad. Remember, find inspiration everywhere, and I'll see you again. Same high heel night time, same high heel night channel.